Hey guys, welcome to another Essential Tutorial. So today I'm going to be showing you how I set up this effect. I have two main layers, the road layer and a building layer. And what we're going to use is the road layer to constrain the particles within TieFlow. So to get started, I'm going to create a collider. And this collider is going to be a sphere object. And all we're going to do is we're just going to add a few keyframes here. And we're just going to make sure that it passes through this road mesh. You'll see in a moment that wherever the sphere passes through is where we're going to generate particles. So let's just quickly display this as a box and let's make sure that it's not renderable. That way you can just see the particles a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and add a tie flow object here. And the first thing I'm going to do is just show you a little quick tip. You can change the layout of your um, tie flow setup by right clicking it and changing it to either horizontal or vertical. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a birth intersection operator. This operator works by creating particles wherever two objects intersect. And so the two objects we're going to select here are going to be the roads. And for the second object, let's go ahead and select that sphere that we just created before. I'm just going to set the display type to tick and I'm going to select the value as white just so that you can see it really clear here. And so as I mentioned before, wherever the sphere collider object passes through now, you're going to now see new particles being generated. I'm also going to add a position object operator and we're going to select that road object again. And I'm going to add a surface test operator as well. One other quick tip here for you guys is if you want to see the particle count, you can right click and select display particle counts. So in our surface test operator, let's change the surface test type to volume inside. This just means that any particles that are within inside the sphere are going to test true and they're going to pass on to the next event. So in the shape operator, let's remove the default. And let's add in a sphere 3D object. And let's also increase the scale up to something like 500. That way we can see them a bit better. Scrubbing through the timeline, you can see that the particles aren't doing anything. They are just generating along the surface of the road. So in order to get them to start moving, let's add a force operator here. And we're going to add in a turbulence noise layer. Now you can see the particles just fly around. But in order to make them lock to the road, we're going to need to use an object bind operator. And let's pick the road to bind them to. Let's change it to lock to surface. And I'm going to play around with the friction percentage parameter. This just controls just how much the particles are sticking to the object. So I'm going to change it all the way down to 0% so that the particles are free to roam wherever they want on the object. In order to get the particles to cover more of the road surface, you can either increase the collision sphere object we created earlier, or you can play around with the strength parameter of the noise layer. Be careful not to set the value too high, otherwise you'll notice that the car particles start to jump across the streets and don't actually follow the path of the roads. So in this instance, I'm just going to tweak the strength and the scale parameters until I'm happy with the look. Next, I'm going to add a spline paths operator. This just allows us to see the trajectory path which the particles followed. And you can see that this is way too dense of a network. There are too many particles. So let's just reduce the density of the intersection operator. Nice. So that looks pretty good. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this. So let's just add a mesh operator here if we want to render it in 3ds Max. Or I'm going to export the spline cache. And I'm just going to show you a, a nice way to be able to export this out as an Alembic file. So let's export this as a tie cache spline file. And now that we have that selected, let's go and add one of two things. You can either use a renderable spline modifier, which allows you to either um, create it as a tube or radial um, object along that spline, or we can use an extrude modifier, which extrudes the spline along one axis. And it's a great way to create a lot less polygons. The file size was 100 gigabytes for me, even using this method. So it's a great way just to keep your file sizes down. I'm then going to go to File, Export, Export Selected, and let's export it as an Alembic file. And I'm going to keep all the settings the same. Let's also do the same thing for our car particles. Let's right click, create a new export particles operator, and I'm going to set it to Alembic Mesh. All of the parameters we can keep the same, and let's just find an area on our hard drive where we want to save it. And I'm also going to uncheck Unreal Engine compatibility and just click Generate Alembic File. Now I just need to export my road mesh. 
I'm going to save it as an FBX file. I'm going to leave all the parameters the same. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for the buildings model. So go file, export, export selected. Also has another FBX and all the parameters the same. So we're done in 3ds Max. Let's go ahead and jump into Omniverse Create. Let's right click on each of those FBX files we just exported and click convert to USD, leaving the default parameters. And I'm going to dive into the folder and right click on that USD file and insert them each as a sub layer. That way now we have two layers in our scene, one with the buildings and one with the roads. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change the direction of the light as well. Next, let's go ahead and bring in the car and traffic splines we exported as Alembic files. Right click on those Alembic files and select insert as sublayer. So now we have four layers in total and you can see that our animation has been brought in. By default, Omniverse has its timeline set to 100 frames total. So let's just bump that up to 200 in order to match our timeline in 3ds Max. I'm going to adjust the material on the buildings to something darker as well so that you can see those traffic lights a little bit better. Next, we're going to add an emissive light material to the traffic splines. There is a preset called light underscore 12,000 K, which we're going to use and we're going to apply it to the road splines and all we're going to change is the emissive intensity to something like 50,000. Now, in order to see it, you're going to need to change your scene to RTX path tracing. And there you go. So now you can see the traffic splines are now emitting their own light. If you find yourself moving around the scene way too quickly, you can adjust the camera speed by going to the gear icon on the left side of your screen. So I'm just going to lower that down a bit. And let's just find a camera angle here that we like. So I think this is a good spot. Let's go ahead and create a camera angle from this view. And under that new camera we just created, let's go ahead and adjust the focus distance and the aperture, or the f-stop. That way we can get some depth of field. Let's go ahead and adjust some of the render settings as well. I'm going to add in um, some more samples to our path tracing to get a bit more bounces. And I'm going to add just a bit of atmosphere by enabling the path traced fog parameter. I want to keep the effect fairly subtle. It's just a good way to soften the emissive light and it just allows your scene to look a little bit more realistic. I'm also going to add some chromatic aberration. And again, I just want to keep the effect subtle. It just kind of has a, a more closer look to a real camera lens. And that's pretty much it. So I'm also going to add some motion blur and a tiny bit of bloom. I'm also going to animate the camera. So let's go to Window, Extensions, and let's go to the Keyframer. This will allow us to add keyframes to our camera. You need to make sure that the camera we just created is selected. And in the Keyframer window, let's add a keyframe for the last frame. And let's go ahead and find a first frame camera angle here. So this is a good spot. Let's add a keyframe here as well. And so now if I drag this other keyframe out to the very end to match our timeline and make the interpolation linear, you can see that as I scrub through the timeline, we now see that camera animation. So that looks pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and export this as an image sequence. By going to the rendering tab and going to movie capture, you can see all of the settings here. The only thing I'm going to change is the render preset to RTX path traced, and I'm going to increase the samples to something like 64. Now let's find a place on our hard drive where we want to save those images. And the only thing I'm going to do is give it a file name and change it to a .exr format. And that's it. So now you can see that it'll start capturing those images. One small note I wanted to mention is that in this example right here, you can see that the noise in the volumetric fog is really high. So in the following shots, I actually increased the sample size up to around 512 and that helped reduce it. So just wanted to give you that heads up. You might find you might have to tweak that based on your scene. So I hope that helped you guys out. I definitely recommend checking out TieFlow. It's free and in beta currently. And so is Omniverse. It's a really powerful real-time rendering technology. Um, they just released it for free earlier in January this year. And yeah, I can't recommend it enough.